right, the Honda's on hold for a week or two. We gotta get this thing back in shape. My boy Moke brought it in. The install wasn't looking very good at all. I'm not gonna call out the shop that did it. Don't even wanna know who did it. All I gotta say is it ain't right. So we're gonna fix it up. Bring that shit in. All right, so the amp rack was ugly and we pulled it up and after we saw what was underneath it, the owner got upset and ripped it all to shreds before I had a chance to videotape it. But I'll go ahead and show you the rat's nest here in a minute. Door panels. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with those. Got some TV playing in the background in case you're wondering what all that noise is. Some shit on Netflix. Custom. Okay, so we've also got these kick panels covered in some furry hair stuff. Some carpet covered in some carpet. You pull this off. It's like, I don't know what was going on with this. So anyways, got a Fosgate six and a half held in with a sheetrock screw. Got a self tapper on the other side. There's a by nine with some silicone and some butyl, it looks like. I don't know what kind of sealant was used, but it ain't right. And of course, the same situation over there. I already took that one off. So, we're gonna make him right. But let's look at this. Let's look at the back. It had double-sided tape on it. And uh, this stuff was all flapping. The adhesive came off or whatever. It's got a quarter inch window and a bandpass box for 215s. This is actually quarter inch. So this was underneath the amp rack. So three Fosgate amps with all this shit underneath it. That's why the owner got mad and did that. Of course we got custom cooling. That's pretty tight. So that was behind there to keep the amp cool. You got fuse blocks, distribution blocks, going into distribution blocks. We got Grandmama's old lamp cord, this old brown one, running into the mids and highs. There's two of them, so they're matching. Two of these. Someone's grandma's pissed. Now it's time to tear it all out and give myself something to work from. Pulling up the carpet a little bit. We got more of Grandmama's lamp cord, the brown cord running all the way to the front. Pulled the carpet up, we got screws, all sorts of screws, some self tappers. Got one of these little holder downers. <laughs> yeah. We got some we got the lamp cord going into some 12 gauge butt connectors all split up. I mean, honestly, it looks like they use pliers to squeeze those. I don't know, but anyways, it's just not a good situation. Okay, what do we have here? This is uh, another speaker wire. I think it's got some butt connectors with some tape wrapped around it. And then, We've got wire that's coming through the door on the bottom and uh, kind of going straight across. This thing should be it should be a hole up up top and a hole down the bottom on the other side so it folds and so it doesn't pinch. But I will give them credit because they used a grommet, so that's good. Got to pull all the old speaker wires out so we can start fresh. 
There's all kinds of stuff going on in here. Well, we got most of the rats nest out, almost all of it. I'm gonna start with a clean slate. Got these door panels off. Some random speakers in the door panel. Not bad speakers, just kind of random. And uh, taking these binines out of the kick panels. And I was looking at how they were fastened in place. There's a screw kind of going through. The screw is kind of on the edge of the hole. And then we got some what looks like butyl sealant around it. I say butyl because it picks and it stretches. It's not solid. It just kind of stretches in your hands and falls apart, see? So this thing's got some butyl sealant on it. One screw through the hole over there. One screw kind of on the outside of the hole, but that's okay because it's got some goo holding it in place. So let's get this bitch out of here. Poor thing. Get it out of there. There's some, some of the goo that's still on it. And here's the hole. Looks good, looks good. <laughs> God damn. We're gonna get this shit fixed up right, one way or the other. And of course we got the Zapco crossover up front, which isn't a bad piece. Actually most of the stuff in here really isn't bad. He's got nice equipment, it's just the install or something wrong with it. But uh, we're gonna replace this with a Rockford 360.3, so out this thing's gonna come. And that should be it for the dismantle. To put some second skin on the doors and on the floors. Make this thing right. Just spent a whole day working on the Chevelle. Stopped by to show them the progress and uh, apparently this was taken out right before I got my hands on the car. What the hell is this? It's a rock, is it a Rockford? What kind of what kind of speaker? It's not a Rockford speaker. It had a sticker on there made in China. Okay, but they glued they glued a tweeter to the little dome. And what the heck is this supposed to be? Like to hold the wires? Yeah. And then they got this sock on here. And it I opened it up a little bit. It looks like it's got like some sort of choke coil. So some homemade crossover wrapped in some felt, wrapped in some red electrical tape. On the back side, oh there you go, American base. So you had all that Rockford shit in there and you had American base at the same time? I've never, never heard no American base shit. Nice auto job. Wow. I'm embarrassed for you, man. God damn. Let's go back at it. Yeah. 